Great, thank you. Uh, okay, so today I will talk about uh, how sweet trust root altered the microbial exopolysaccharide, the EPS production in marginal uh, in marginal land soil. <clears throat> so first I will describe what are marginal land. So those are area with uh, poor agricultural values, mainly because of their poor soil quality. Uh, in the United States, you can find them in the southern parts of the Great Plains. During the, to put it in a bit of a historical perspective, during the 1930s, they tried to apply modern agricultural practices in these areas, like uh, uh, deep plowing, but also removal of the uh, deep rooting perennials. This, together with a series of uh, drought years, caused uh, severe land degradations uh, and a phenomenon called the, the dust balls. And the impact of the dust balls uh, lasted for uh, decades later. <clears throat> so the question is, what can we do with those uh, marginal land uh, soils? So in recent years, it was proposed uh, to grow their uh, biofuel crops. Uh, in order not to, uh, that growing biofuel won't be on the expense of growing food. And one candidate for a uh, biofuel crop is a sweet grass, a deep uh, rooting perennial grass. And this is a switch grass that we excavated from our field site in uh, Oklahoma. And you can uh, have some impression of its uh, extensive uh, root system. It can go down up to three meters depth, I think even deeper. <clears throat> Another advantage of uh, happy, having such a deep rooting, uh, long living uh, uh, root system in the ground is by increasing uh, carbon deposition in the soil. However, the carbon, um, the biological mechanism underlying the uh, carbon stabilization in the soil is uh, still poorly understood. Uh, today in my talk, I want to focus on uh, exocellular uh, polysaccharide production that I would refer to as EPS production in the soil. Um, so, first, uh, polysaccharides are part of the um, polymers that uh, microorganisms produce in order uh, to protect themselves, like uh, DNA and, and, and uh, protein. Uh, the polysaccharides are uh, composed of uh, a lot of uh, monosaccharides bonded with a uh, glycosidic bond, like the uh, example of the cellulose over here. Uh, microorganisms produce them in order to protect them against uh, harsh environmental uh, condition, such as uh, lower water potential. Uh, for example, in this uh, uh, study, uh, they inoculated um, um, soil microorganisms and sand grains and uh, uh, grew them under uh, low water potential, under high water potential and low water potential and uh, imaged it with a uh, cryo-electron uh, microscopy. And you can see in the, in the high water potential, uh, you can clearly see the microbial cells, uh, but in the low water potential, uh, you can see a sheath of polymer covering the microbial cells. Uh, later, chem later chemical analysis showed that it was mostly uh, polysaccharides. In addition to protecting uh, the microorganisms, it's also have an effect of so on the soil. First of all, uh, because microorganisms can get to occluded and protected niches in the soil, uh, so it can increase its uh, longevity there. And um, also, as an adhesive agent, it can increase uh, aggregate stability. So if you look at the soil, uh, go down in scale and zoom in, we can see the microbial cells over here in pink, or in dark pink, and over here the pink smudge uh, resembling the uh, EPS, and we can uh, have the feeling of how it uh, binding uh, soil particles together, and also how it's in uh, more occluded niches in the soil. So the aims of this study is, first of all, to examine how different 
fertilization and watering treatments of switchgrass can control EPS production or EPS concentration. Later, I want to determine that the EPS is actually from a, a microbial source that microorganisms produced it. Uh, secondly, to determine how much of the carbon source for EPS made its way from a, root, a carbon fixation by the plant. And lastly, to examine whether in the uh, treatment that we have more EPS, we also uh, see increased aggregate stability. How can EPS affect the uh, uh, soil structure? Um, to do that, we constructed the following experiment, uh, experimental uh, setup. It was a part of a bigger, large-scale uh, greenhouse experiment in which uh, we made uh, a mesocosm. We bought over a marginal land soil from Oklahoma, packed it in a mesocosm in the same uh, bulk density and uh, horizon uh, structure as in the field, and planted the... Uh, um, switch grass inside and applied five different uh, treatments, a control treatment uh, with sufficient irrigation but without any uh, fertilization added, uh, added nitrogen fertilizer, nitrogen and phosphorus uh, fertilizer, uh, just first phosphorus fertilizers. All of those fertilization treatment had sufficient irrigation and a low watering uh, treatment without any fertilization. Each treatment had uh, six replica. Three of those replica were also, at some point of the uh, uh, growing season, uh, was incubated with 13C CO2. So this is the uh, timeline of the uh, experiment. After uh, 18 weeks, we started a 13 CO2 labeling. And after two weeks afterward, at uh, week 20, we destructively harvest um, all the mesocosms. So for some, ah, yeah, this is some uh, pictures of how the green experiment uh, look like. So you can see the uh, different mesocosms in the greenhouse with the switchgrass inside. And this is the system to measure and control uh, 13C and 12C CO2. So the, to measure 12C, uh, the 13C CO2, uh, we measured it with a uh, Picaro, uh, the 12C CO2 uh, we measured it with an uh, infrared uh, uh, gas analyzer. And also in the um, uh, control treatment and uh, low watering treatment, we had a Decagon EC5 probe to continuously measure soil water content. So for some uh, background results, how the fertilizer treatment affect uh, the soil. So first of all, we had in the plus N, okay, Go on the x-axis, you can see the control treatment, the nitrogen treatment, uh, fertilization plus N plus P treatment, uh, phosphorus and low watering treatment. And what you can see is that the uh, uh, plus N plus P treatment, probably not so surprising, had the most biggest uh, root biomass. And this is the total biomass across all three uh, horizons. Next, uh, we analyzed uh, dissolved organic carbon and also the same trend, uh, specifically at the top horizon, uh, we have, um, we can see higher uh, dissolved organic carbon, higher DOC. Since most of the significant uh, differences in soil parameters we'll find on the top horizons, from now on I will mainly focus on this uh, horizon. Uh, next is the soil water content, so um, uh, in a uh, opposite uh, trend, we found that the NP treatment actually had the uh, lower soil water content, uh, as is the, in the low uh, watering treatment, uh, probably uh, due to the bigger uh, root system and uh, bigger biomass that used, it, used more water. And if we look at the daily fluctuations in uh, soil water content, uh, we can see that uh, there were more fluctuations in the low uh, watering treatment, and we can imagine how in the plus N plus P treatment with a bigger root biomass that had uh, supposed to have a similar um, watering regime as other uh, treatment had 
also higher fluctuations in soil water content. So how does this uh, soil water is uh, soil parameters affected by the root biomass affected EPS production? So first, I want to make the point that uh, I have extracted the uh, EPS from the soil. Uh, with extraction method called cation exchange resin method, which previously previous shown uh, to minimize cell lysis, that we can be sure that the polysaccharide uh, I'm ex looking at is extracellular and not coming from any uh, in, uh, intracellular. And then I measured uh, the carbohydrate content of the extract. And uh, what we found is uh, the same trend of the higher uh, biomass and higher DOC content uh, and higher um, EPS uh, concentration in the treatment of the plus N, P, uh, plus N and plus P uh, treatment. But uh, so now I'm showing a chemical analysis of the EPS and probably some of the people would say, okay, this polysaccharide probably came from the uh, higher root biomass, uh, probably mucilage. So for that, I did um, a monosaccharide composition analysis to see uh, indicators for either macrobial uh, um, uh, source origin of um, uh, polysaccharide or uh, a plant origin of the polysaccharides. So this is uh, the results. Uh, I analy analyzed it uh, with a Dianex ion chromatograph after hydrolyzing the polysaccharide. And what we can see that there is a large portion in the polysaccharide that analy I analyzed of uh, manos and indicators of a microbial source uh, polysaccharide. And a lower amount of xylose and arabinose, an indicator for a plant source uh, polysaccharides. And in the literature, it is indicated that any uh, number of the ratio of manos to arabinose plus xylose above two is a good indicator that the polysaccharides that we found are from a microbial source. Um, uh, so now that I established that it's a microbial source, I try to see how um, uh, microbial biomass affected the EPS uh, projection. Uh, production. So I normalized the EPS concentration that I found to microbial biomass according to uh, PLFA. So basically the PLFA analysis didn't find any significant differences between the treatments. So uh, I found the same trend of the higher EPS per microbial biomass at the plus N plus P uh, treatment. Uh, so after I show that we have more EPS at a, a bigger root uh, biomass uh, treatment, uh, we, w we went ahead and tried to see if there, it's affected also the soil structure. And I analyzed um, aggregate stability with the, the wet sieving method. And it's followed the same trend as the uh, EPS concentration and uh, higher root biomass and DOC with um, a, a higher aggregate stability at the plus N plus P uh, treatment. The next step that we wanted uh, to take is to ask how much of the recent photosynthet that went through uh, the, the plant fixed and went through the soil actually arrived and incorporated into the EPS. So I took into advantage that this experiment also had a 13C labeling that it's uh, mostly for uh, DNA SIP analysis, but uh, the DNA is still extracted in, in extraction and uh, spinning. But uh, I could analyze the uh, 13C enrichment in the EPS. So this is the result of the uh, 13C uh, enrichment. First of all, I want to uh, emphasize that the background 12C treatment were much lower than the treatment, so we had uh, enrichment. Uh, carbon that came through, from the plant through the soil got to the uh, microorganism for inc incorporation into the EPS. But what was surprising that um, we see the opposite trend of uh, 
lower enrichment and uh, plus N plus B uh, treatment similar to the uh, low uh, water treatment. We interpret that uh, this is caused mainly because in this treatment there is low soil water content which have reduced uh, connectivity between the soil uh, niches uh, which uh, reduce the diffusion of um, carbon uh, from uh, plant roots into a microorganism to incorporate uh, the carbon into the EPS. So, uh, to summarize the results, after five months of growth, significantly higher EPS production was uh, found in the uh, plus, N P, plus N plus P treatment with a bigger uh, root system. Uh, probably uh, due to the higher carbon availability and higher fluctuation in soil water contents led to a, a higher EPS uh, production. A monosaccharide composition, composition analysis confirmed that the polysaccharide that we see is primarily produced by microorganisms. Uh, the EPS that produce also increased uh, aggregate stability. And uh, uh, the root system affecting uh, soil water content also uh, affect the delivery of uh, carbon from the plant uh, to the microorganism to be incorporated into the EPS. Uh, ultimately, this study shows that uh, switch grassroots has the, potentially to meet the potential to mitigate uh, microbial EPS production, which can potentially increase carbon deposition in the soil. Our uh, further, further work is the, to confirm it actually in the, the field, so we are currently uh, doing uh, deep uh, coring, taking samples from uh, up to three uh, meters along the deep roots of the sweetgrass and from uh, annual uh, crop uh, fields and compare it for uh, EPS uh, content. And in addition, we will measure the age of the soil organic matter there with a 14C accelerated mass spectrometry uh, dating. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, the DOE for funding this project and uh, the USDA for funding uh, my postdoctoral fellowship uh, to acknowledge uh, Mary, uh, my PI, Mary Firestone, and uh, lab members and uh, the other collaborators in the uh, Noble Foundation in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma uh, University, in Lawrence Livermore, Livermore uh, uh, Lab, and in the Berkeley Lab. Thank you very much for listening.